MLB 07 the show the greatest baseball game I've ever played it is the athletics fantasy franchise what's up fellas JPS delivers here hopefully all is well with y'all in a way game here at AmeriQuest Field in Arlington Texas which no longer exists and neither does a solid Rangers team well at least today it seems like you never know you just never know but uh, Athletics and the boys got Carl Crawford and the gang right there. Pitcher on the mound will be their, I mean, player to watch, Vlad Guerrero. And they're not wrong. They're not wrong. I think Vlad has himself quite the day ahead of him. Batting 322, no surprise there. Well on his way to 100 RBIs late in the season here. Carl Crawford is going to lead off for this Oakland A's team. Easily one of the top three fastest players in all of baseball at this time. Up next with Grady Sizemore, who is one of the top hitters in all of baseball right now. Robbie Cano at three. DH, Carlos Pena, batting just under, well, a little bit under 300. The man, the myth, the legend, Vlad Guerrero. Hanley Ramirez. Nick Johnson at first base. One of the best Golden Glove fielders in all the league at this time. Nick Punto batting eighth. And then to round it out, AP Villarreal. And then pitcher on the mound today, Shane Comin, or Comine, whatever the fuck you want to say. One win, zero losses. Must be a player they called up for the season. I mean, not many appearances whatsoever. Solid ERA, at least in his showings. Chris Burke, Derek Anderson, Jermaine Dye on the outfield, Oswaldo Navarro. Shane Comine, obviously, at pitcher. Kai Osbo, Ramon Martinez. And I did not name off the roster for this Rangers team fast enough. Carl Crawford going to lead it off. He himself, I mean, hey, this team has been batting really well this season. But for the leadoff man, his average has not been in the 300s. I can only imagine what this offense was been like. Has, you know, you know, if this man is batting 300, he's got to have a ton of runs on the season. Um, still getting a decent amount of RBIs, decent amount of home runs on this run right here. And unfortunately, though, he's speedy, man, but he's going to ground out for an easy ground out to the first baseman. Grady Sizemore up to bat here. One out, one where one up, one down. Make it two down. It's going to be, I mean, hey, if anybody was in the infield on base, most likely infield fly rule. Robbie Cano up to bat now. Two one count. Two outs. Nice pitch, but an even better hit. We're going to get a nice little replay on this one. Not the most solid of contact. Okay, I guess we're not getting a replay. But here we go. Carlos Pena was really trying to take that yard, but a wonderful play by the first baseman, and that is going to retire the side here in the first inning. Chris Burke leading off with Ramon Martinez second. So Chris Burke, one of, uh, you know, one of the best moments in Astros postseason history before they got swept in the uh, World Series by the White Sox. Funny enough, we got Bobby Jinks and stuff. But he's going to lead off this team. He did have that 18th inning home run against the Atlanta Braves in which Roger Clemens even pitched in relief. I mean, hey, 18 innings at that point. It's like, you know, you have to go through like four or five pitchers at least when you think about it if you want to keep some arms warm. Must win games, so it was kind of like all goes. There's no, you know, no limit on some of the guys you're going to have pitched. Some of those relievers are going to throw three innings or whatnot. Maybe even four if they're pitching really well. And speaking of pitching decently well, Rich Hill, 12 wins, 10 losses. ERA is eh, a little bit high right there at four, but forcing enough the 12 wins. More so to do with the fact that he has one solid lineup behind him. And this is a solid defensive core with the uh, one of the best uh, outfields, Hanley Ramirez at shortstop, Nick Punto, Golden Glove at third base, Nick Johnson at first, Robert Cano at second, and Mr. Villarreal is going to be calling the pitches today for Mitchell Rich Hill on the mound, Chris Burke, here we go, walking his way up slowly but surely, I mean, this walk up is just nearly as long as Nomar Garcia Parra's uh, wrist tying or whatever the fuck you would like to call it, right here, one and two, if you want to pull the string on this man, no. We're sitting in the heat. Beautiful strikeout to start off the game. Can't start off any better against a lackluster lineup here in Arlington. Nice strikeout. And then right here with one out, 
0-2 count. Can we get two Ks to start off this game? Catch him looking that fastball. Maybe a little bit of movement up in the zone. But for the most part, beautifully done. Most part, beautifully done. And, uh, well, 1-0. Let's see if we can retire the side. To start off, he's already feeling it. That meter, that sweet spot on the pitching meter is right there. It's going to fly out to Grady Sizemore, one of the more impressive fielders and, I mean, in all of the outfield, especially the center field position. Here we go, Vlad Guerrero. Ball's going to be thrown high up to him. And it's going to be a solid hit right there. I thought he was going yard. He might have gone yard had I, you know, maybe not gotten a little bit too fucking anxious and excited for the guessing that pitch up in the zone correctly. Had I just, you know, waited a little bit longer, could have taken that to right field. But hey, runner on. And then going to set up a beautiful bunt by Hanley Ramirez, at least fast enough to beat that out. However much it did seem like the earth rotated its full axis right there while that ball was in the air. Just a terrible, terrible communication by the two and really not executed well whatsoever. Two men on, now with zero outs. Nick Johnson at the plate. One of the more solid, underrated hitters in this lineup. Guesses the pitch right, and he's going to send that out there. And, uh, well, we'll hold uh, we'll hold up the man at third base. So bases are juiced for Nick Punto. And what is he going to do right here? Check swing. It hits us, fellas. The Charles Barkley check swing of my own while playing this game. Going to be a strikeout. I mean, I wish we would have put it into play right there. But, hey, it is what it is. One out. And the bases are loaded. Bottom of the order right here. What can we do? And unfortunately so for the shortstop. What should have been one of the easier double plays to turn right there. Especially hitting it to the shortstop in general. It's just hit it straight to him. Nothing happening right there for the defense. I'd be pissed off if I was a pitcher. Especially if you set up a really good pitch to get yourself out of a jam. Only for the glove to jam up by Mr. Navarro. On the play, it's going to be the first run of the day. Carl Crawford back up to bat. What can he do here himself? And unfortunately so, just bad contact timing by myself. Should have hit that just like the Robbie Cano single to start off the hits for this team so far. Should have hit it right up the middle. Could have driven him too. Possibly. Possibly. Not very fast man and Nick Johnson at second base, so you never know. But first hit is a solid, solid powerful hit right up the middle and that's going to put the first man on for the Texas Rangers. See what this team has to do at this point. But uh, Rich Hill, he's been one of the easier guys to, I mean, it was getting used to. And here we go, beautiful. I mean, we're going to get a replay on this one. This is, this is, I mean, tell this to uh, Mr. Osbaldo over there at shortstop for Texas. This is how you turn a double play, folks. Beautiful right there. Hanley Ramirez is handling it on that one. Two outs on the one single play right there to the second baseman and then a loud third out to retire the side gonna remain scoreless for this texas team again you know that's expected at this point and then remaining scoreless let's go ahead and add another one onto it almost looked like it was gonna get robbed but hey this season is going on way too well for grady sizemore make that i believe 20th home run on this season maybe even more Maybe he's 21st. I don't know. We'll have to check at the end of the game. That one goes 410 feet just over the center fielder. And it's going to be 2-0 at this point. Robbie Cano now on an 0-1 count. And that was beautifully timed on that one. Wasn't the correct pitch, but we did guess the location. And able to pretty much halfway through realize which kind of ball it was. It looked like it was a hanging curveball. So, uh, in all honesty... Hey, just setting it up right there. Carlos Pena now at the plate. Three and one, and he's going to watch that one go as he's now going to be watched by the catcher as he goes to first base. Two men on now for Vlad Guerrero. Man setting himself up. Ooh, that check swing. Just, I mean, that ball. Mm. Can only wish that ball was taken yard right there. But hey, forcing enough, you get another opportunity. And he smacks that one, baby. He was a player to watch. I believe that's going to make it 40 home runs on the season now. Make that three more RBIs. He's at 98 RBIs on the season. Batting well over 300. 
first guy we drafted in all of this fantasy franchise in the first round. Pretty much uh, him and Ichiro, the two best right fielders in this game at the time. And things are getting done. I mean, 5-0 to zero has not been a good outing so far by Mr. Comine. Going to be another runner on. Nick Johnson going to send this into the corner and right field. Should be a double for the slow man. Considering all eyes will be on the runner from first base to check and see just to prevent the run. It's going to be two runners on now. Third and second. New Pinto. Pinto. And then mistake right here. Mistake. There's a couple buttons you can use. I think it's like L2 and R2. R2 is advance all runners to the next base. So uh, let's say you do get a ball um, that, you know, it's kind of a little testy, a uh, little soft hit ball that you don't know necessarily right away. You know, sometimes the, uh, the in baseball games you will know if a ball is going to be uh, pretty much an out or not uh, or the ball's going to land into play and be a hit. Um, the runners are already running. You kind of get that idea. Um, you just press R2 and advances everyone right there. And then here we go. Easy ground out. It's going to retire the side. But the damage has been done. Rich Hill now. Richie Rich Hill. Another loud out. Not as loud as the one earlier. But, I mean, hey, all the confidence in the world. He started off with two Ks. Not really much of a uh, strikeout magician. But he is getting quite a bit of ground balls. Throwing it like Dallas Keuchel did two seasons ago for the Astros. And we're going to get another out right here. Very, very short inning. Definitely not, type, uh, not the type of inning you're going to want from a lineup, especially if you're down by five runs and you just want to get some momentum. Just not the way to go. I'd say the best way to do it is just wait and look for your pitch. I know I say that, and then, you know, that ends up happening. Grady Sizemore, another fly out, but his damage was already done since he's already accounted for more runs than this entire Texas team than Robbie Cano. Going to be a loud out. And that's going to retire the side right here for this Oakland A's team. 5-0 still with no runs at the top of the fourth. And right there, pulling the string on Mr. Chris Burke. Right there, like Mr. Geppetto on that one. Pulling the strings beautifully. I think it was a 12-6 curveball. Or it might have been a well-timed changeup. There's, I mean, I'm just noticing not many changeups are requested from this catcher. I don't know if it has to do with just like the skill of the catcher, how good he is, his attributes. Um, but pretty much overall, uh, there's about like five or ten times that I'll press the changeup instead of a fastball. Just considering, you know, I've been throwing a fastball like 85% of the pitches. You might as well change it up, keep them honest. Then right there, I don't know how I got a hold of that one. That's going to be a ground out right there. One out, Vlad Guerrero is up to bat. And let's take this one yard. Let's take it yard. Is it going to go? Is it going to go? There's a high wall to left field, but not high enough. Maybe Fenway Park would have held that in. But we're not facing the Red Sox. We're facing the shitty Texas Rangers, Fernando Rodney. And it's amazing to see how long ago this game was. Fernando Rodney is like 25, I think, at the beginning of the season, considering I think that's his age at least from what I remember, because I have another franchise that I'm just playing on the side while I also, I mean, this, hey guys, this is my favorite one. This is my favorite franchise. Hey, nothing, nothing personal. But I made another franchise, and I made him one, or drafted him one as one of my relieving pitchers. He's 25 years old. Pretty sure, and he was involved in a trade in which one of my friends' cousin is Chris Paddock, who's the pitcher. He's uh, supposed to be set up to be the number one pitcher for the San Diego Padres. I mean, a hell of a time for him to join that team two or three years ago. But he was traded in a trade from the Marlins to San Diego for Fernando Rodney. Terrible trade. But hey, oddly enough, everybody was saying that about all the good players that have left Miami. But this Miami team, I mean, out of pretty much most of those teams, I think Chris is in a well of a situation. Most of those guys that everybody, you know, was talking about, like a Kristen Yelich, most of those guys are in better situations than the Miami Marlins until this season to where the Marlins made the playoffs fly out right there by Nick Punto. But yeah, Fernando Rodney was like 39 years old like last year. I think he's in his 40s now. He might be retired, but 25 years old when this game came out. I don't know if the math works on that one. Uh, maybe 39. Maybe 39. Um, 
considering uh, it could be 26 right when the season starts, but just when the fantasy draft. But this should take a player in from second base, base, but that was a based hit by Mr. Uh, Robbie Cano. And then Carlos Pena, the lefty, should have put in Willie Mo Pena, see if we, what we can get with that. Nick Johnson at the plate. Nice, solid hit. But it's going to be a beautiful, wonderful grab by Chris Burke. Nicely done. That man's right there. Well, he's like, God damn, I can at least sleep a little bit tonight knowing I didn't give up two or three runs instead of just the one. But here we go. Villarreal does finally get a hit. This one, I think he was riding a hit streak or maybe last game he was. I don't know exactly. All I know is that him and Grady Sizemore were both in hitting streaks recently. And it's going to be another two runs, I believe, coming in. Um, sin, uh, and another thing, too. If you got a fast enough guy and they're going to throw it to the relay, which is technically the pitcher right there in the infield, you might as well take uh, Carl Crawford and just send him to second base. But here we go, top of the ninth. Things start to get a little testy, and I'm not talking about for the sake of, you know, testing the outcome of this game. Well out of, well out of it. But Jermaine Dye gets struck out. Right there, nice pitching right there by Rich Hill, who, like I said, he's been pitching well by causing a bunch of ground balls. But, you know, if you place a pitch right, a guy who's averaging probably around 89, 90 miles per hour, I mean, his when you look at the player card in the video game, his, his velocity is not very great. But right when I was about to warm up a guy, just in case, you know, don't want to take, you know, hey, saving a little bit of stats. Saving a little bit of stats for Mr. Richie Rich. But, fortunately enough, Maybe it was the bullpen momentum right there that uh, Mr. Uh, Richie Hill ends up getting the shutout. I think he gave up four hits on the day. Whole team right there congratulating itself. A pissed off Rangers team. I mean, no one wants to lose by that much. But really, though, play of the game is going to be this double play, I guess. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Things were getting a little testy at this point, considering I think it was only 1-0. It might have been 0-0 at this point but a hey, good fielding game four hits six strikeouts i mean not the greatest strikeout to hit ratio but it was a solid game as always fellas take it easy and see y'all next time